little perturbed right now. You know why? Because I just recorded this whole video and the sound didn't work. So I have to do it again. <laughs> I'm sure you're cheering because I know the sound is bad on these videos. But uh, I'm sure you don't want 25 minutes of silence. It was a long video too. Now i got to do it all over again. Ay, 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 ay. All right. Polynomials. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, divide polynomials. So what is a polynomial? Well, if I have a single term, like a 3x squared, we have a special name for it. Monomial. Let's take a second term on there. That's got a special name. Binomial. Okay. All right, now gold star for anybody who could figure out the special name we might have for a three-term polynomial. Come on. You got it. Trinomial. Okay, those are special cases. Poly is a catch-all, okay? I think it means many. Greek or Latin. Greek, I think. means many, okay? So all of these, we could, even the first one, we could still call that a polynomial if we wanted to, okay? So let's add and subtract these polynomials, okay? Now, we've really done this, some of this before, okay? We just didn't use those words. We called it combining like terms, okay? But now I'm going to kind of officially have... Polynomial A over here, 7x squared plus 3x minus 4. And I'm going to add it to polynomial B over here. And we'll call that 4x squared plus 2x plus 6. Okay? I'm going to add these two polynomials together. The parentheses aren't doing anything other than just grouping, saying, hey, here's my first polynomial, here's my second polynomial, add them together. Okay? So let's add them together. A 7x squared and a 4x squared gives me an 11x squared. A 3x and a 2x gives me a 5x. And a negative 4 and a positive 6 gives me a 2. Okay, I just combined my like terms. That's all I did. Okay, all good there? Piece of cake. Okay, adding polynomials really doesn't amount to much. Okay, other than combining like terms. It's just, just a little bit different way to, ex to express it. Okay, what about subtracting? Let's take 9x squared plus 7x minus 2, and now we're going to subtract away 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. Okay, now that second parenthesis is serving a purpose. Okay, because I've got a subtraction in front of it. Remember when I have a negative sign in front of a parenthesis, it's like taking a negative 1 and distributing it across. So I am a fan of rewriting this one. Okay, the addition one I didn't see a reason to, but here I do because everything gets its sign change. That now becomes minus 2x squared plus 4x and plus 6. Okay, now combine like terms. A 9x squared and a negative 2x squared becomes a 7x squared. 7x and 4x becomes 11x. And negative 2 and positive 6 becomes a positive 4. Okay? All good there? Subtracting polynomials. Adding and subtracting. What about multiplying? Okay? Now for that we got to kind of review a little bit about exponents and talk about it. All right, let me get a fresh page here. Let's go back to the world of exponents. If I gave you 2 to the power of 4, I ask you to you know, kind of explain that to me, expand it out. You'd say, well, that means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? And then if I ask you the same question with 2 to the power of 3, you'd say, well, okay, 2 times 2 times 2. So if I said, let's combine those, let's multiply 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 3. And you say, well, I had four twos on the first part, and then I had three more twos, all multiplied together. How many twos do I have sitting there? I've got seven of them, right? So I can call that 2 to the power of 7. See that? You know, there's an easier way to get that 7 than all that hard work I just did. I'm going to take my 4 and my 3, my exponents, and I'm going to add them together. Add them together. Okay? If I have some base b to the power m, 
and I'm going to multiply it by that same base b to the power of n, generically presented here. It's the same base b, but I simply add the exponents together. Okay? Same base b. A common mistake on a problem like this. 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd. We're so used to saying 2 times 2 is 4 that we write a 4 there maybe. And then we get our exponent part correct and we say 4 to the power of 7. Okay, no. No, no, no. We keep the same base. We must have the same base to begin with. And then we keep that same base. And we simply add the exponents together. Alright? So, 2 squared times 2 cubed... 2 to the power of 5. Add them together. Can I use an x? Sure, I can use an x. x to the 7 times x to the 3 gives me x to the, add them together, 10. y times y to the 5th. Now you say there is no exponent on that first y. Well, when there's no exponent shown, it means there's a nice pretty 1 there. So it becomes y to the power of 6. Okay? x squared times x cubed times x to the fourth. I'm not limited to just two things multiplied together. I could have all kinds of stuff multiplied together. Keep that same base of x. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 gives me a 9. All right? Just that easy. Okay, we call that the, uh, this is called the product rule here. Product rule. Okay, I don't know. All right. Now let me ask you this. What if I took my, you know, 3 squared here, and then I raised it to the power of 4? Ooh, baby, look at that. An outer exponent. Well, stop and think about it. The power of 4 means take that creature, whatever it is, multiply it by itself four times. That's what power of four means. Well, we've seen this before. We just saw one almost like that. I got a bunch of threes to exponents being multiplied together. I'm going to have that same base of three, and I'm going to add two, four, six, eight. Three to the power of eight. Okay, what's the shortcut way I could have got that eight? You can see it right here. Two times four would give me that eight. So in this case, I'm going to multiply the exponents. Okay, called the power rule. The product, uh, yeah, power rule. If I have some b to the power of m, and then I raise it again to the power of n. Same b, same base, but this time I'm going to multiply those powers together. Okay, let's practice that. 2 cubed and then raised to the power of 5. Same 2 to the 15th x to the 6th, and then I raise that to the 4th, x to the 24th, okay? Just that simple. Okay? Power rule. Exponent raised to another exponent, I multiply the exponents together. Alright, well let's kind of combine those things. Products to power rule. The product to power rule. Let's see. What if I have the product of two things, like 2 times x, that's a product, and now I raise it up to a power, 4. Well, that's going to mean 2 to the 4th times x to the 4th, that's all. The product applies to everything, or the power applies to the entire product inside that parentheses. Okay, so if we show it a little generically, some a times b, two things multiply together, raised to the power m, that's just a to the n times b to the n. Okay, let's practice that a little bit. How about 5x, everybody cubed here, that equals 5 cubed times x cubed. Okay, now we might want to take it all the way home here. 5 cubed is some number, right? We can figure out what that is. And we'll take it, call that, <coughs> excuse me, 125 x cubed. <coughs> what about this one? Negative 2, <coughs> y to the 4th. And then everybody raised to the power of 5.
excuse me there. Well, everybody's getting raised to the power of five. Negative two goes to the fifth power. Y to the fourth goes to the fifth power, so I'm going to multiply and get a 20 there. And then I can figure out negative two to the fifth power, can't I? It's just negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. It's going to be a negative 32 times y to the 20th. All right. All right. Well, let's use this idea. Let's multiply some monomials together. Multiply. Single term times another single term. That's what monomials are. Let's take 2x and multiply it by 4x squared. We're going to multiply coefficients. 2 times 4 is 8. That's regular multiplication. And we're going to add the exponents. Remember, there's no exponents shown there, which means there's a 1. So it's 1 plus 2x to the third power. Okay, negative 10x to the 6th times 6x to the 10th. Negative 10 times a positive 6 is a negative 60. x to the 6th plus x uh, times x to the 10th. That's where I add the exponents together. And I'll get x to the 16th. Okay, all good there. Multiplying monomials. How about multiplying a monoreal to a poly? Okay, multiply a monomial to a polynomial. So in other words, I've got 3x squared. There's my monomial. But I'm going to multiply it to a polynomial. I'm going to have more, more than one thing there. So maybe like a 2x cubed uh, plus 5x in here. Okay, well, we've seen very similar structure to that before. That's the distributive property, right? I'm going to take that 3x squared and just multiply it across. So 3 times 2 is going to give me 6x to the, add them, 5th power, plus 3 times 5 is 15x to the 3rd power. That's all. <coughs> That's pretty easy. All right, all good there. How about this one? Now I got a trinomial in there. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take that monomial out front and distribute it across. So I'm going to get 8x to the fifth power plus 24x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed. Okay, all good there, I hope. What are we going to do now if, if, if I'm trying to multiply two things, but neither one of them is a monomial? Like, what if I have two binomials? And I want to multiply them together. You know, for example, what if I have x plus 3 times x plus 3? Two. Okay, we've seen this before in that square root video. I kind of started talking some more complicated things. I said I would come back and really discuss discuss it a little bit more. When I have two binomials multiplied like that, that's where that acronym FOIL comes in. It stands for first, outside, inside, and last. It's just a way to help you remember what to do. You take the first one here and the first one here and multiply them together. You get an x squared. Then you take the two on the out, outer edges, right? The outside. The x here and the two here. x times 2, I'm, I'm going to write it as x2 just for a second. x times 2 just like it reads. x2. Or just like it's written. Now the inside. The two inside close to each other. 3 times x. 3x. 
And then finally, the last one here and last one here, 3 times 2 is 6. I just wanted to write this to drive the point home. This is extremely awkward. You never put the number before the letter. But just in case you're, you're kind of more visual, and that's how it reads, the X is on the left and the 2 is on the right, we must recognize that the commutative property, this is a multiplication problem, right? X times 2. Well, X times 2 is the same thing as 2 times X. So I can just switch those two. And now it's obvious that I have a like term here that I can combine. Put those two pieces together and get that. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Okay, so this FOIL process, first, outside, inside, last, is, is a way to help you remember how to do those. If you don't care for the, the acronym and you'd rather just just do it and not have to really think so much about the word FOIL, not that it's hard, all we're going to do is take the 3x and distribute it across, and then we're going to take the 7 and distribute it across. That's all we're going to do. And it's the same thing. So 3x times 2x gives me a 6x squared. 3x times minus 4 gives me minus 12x. 7 times 2x gives me plus 14x, and 7 times negative 4 gives me a negative 28. Combine those like terms, and what do we get here? 6x squared, we're going to get plus 2x minus 28. Okay, just like that. Okay, all good there. So that's a couple of binomials. Now, occasionally we might want to multiply maybe a binomial to a trinomial. Right? Yikes. Well, we don't have a cute little acronym to remember, but we're just going to kind of do the school of hard knocks like I just did in that last example. I, I didn't really think acronym in that last example. I thought more of the distributive property. We're going to take the 2x and distribute it across. It's just that we've got more things to do now. And then we're going to take the 3 and do the same thing. Piece of cake. Combine like terms. 2x times x squared gives me 2x cubed. 2x times 4x gives me 8x squared. 2x times 5 gives me 10x. 3 times x squared gives me 3x squared. 3 times 4x gives me 12x. And 3 times 5 gives me a 15. we got to combine some like terms here. Well, there's only one x cubed here, so we're going to leave 2x cubed alone. I've got a couple of x squares I can put together. The 8x squared and the 3x squared, they're both positive, so I'm going to get 11x squared. Uh, what else can I do here? I've got a 10x and a 12x, again, both positive. That's going to give me a 22x. And then 15's flying solo here, so nobody to combine with. And there we go. All done. Okay, so multiplying these uh, polynomials. The procedure is just going to be distribute the 2x and then distribute the 3. Okay, combine like terms at the end. All right, cool. What about, what about this one? What if I had, let's be careful here. What if I had x plus 2 squared? Okay. Now, I, th I think the knee-jerk response is going to be, well, that's x squared plus, you know, 2 squared, which would be x squared plus 4, right? Not correct. correct. Okay. X plus 2 squared. What does that square mean? It means take this creature and multiply it by itself twice, right? Well, now look at it. Now it's a FOIL process. We didn't do a FOIL process right there. That's why it's wrong. FOIL process. X times X is X squared. X times 2 is 2X. Another 2 times x gives me another 2x, and 2 plus times 2 is 4, and there we go. Simplify it, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, so you see I completely lost that center term up here when I just kind of jumped the gun a little bit on it, so we got to be careful about that, okay? Now, if you're thinking, maybe I'm contradicting myself, because you've heard me say, just square everybody in there, right? When I've got that outer exponent, just square everybody in there. Well, that was our product to power rule. That's where we had, you know, 3x, 
everybody squared, but there's no plus sign in here. This is a monomial. In that case, 3 squared, x squared, and we'll simplify that 3 squared and call it a 9. Yes, we can do that. Okay, I can do that with all kinds of 4x squared, y cubed, z to the fourth power. And square everybody in there. Oh, baby, look at that. That's easy. It becomes 4 squared. x squared squared again. I'm going to multiply and get x to the fourth. y cubed squared is going to be multiply y to the sixth. z to the fourth squared is going to be z to the eighth. Okay, and the only other thing I might want to simplify is call that a 16 instead of calling it 4 squared. Okay, pretty, pretty easy. Just square everybody in there. Okay, the big difference between that and this, these is that we've got a plus sign in here. That changes everything. Okay? If that 3x were 3 plus x squared, now it's a FOIL process. Now, I can't just do that. i got to say, what does that mean? 3 plus x times itself. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times x is 3x. x times 3 is 3x. X times X is X squared. It's just written a little backwards. Usually we put the X squared term first, right? And then the X terms, combine those two, and then the constant term. There we go. Okay, so that's the big difference. Okay, one other thing I want to mention on this section is, is a special case, and we saw it with the radicals when we did some of this with the radicals. And that's if I have some uh, A plus B times A minus B. Okay, let's, let's do the FOIL process, FOIL this out. A times A gives me an A squared. A times a minus B gives me minus AB. B times A gives me BA, but I'm going to call it AB because I can reverse the order, remember? And then B times minus B gives me minus B squared. So when I simplify that, the two pieces in the middle disappear, and I'm just left with this, A squared minus B squared. Okay, so that's kind of a nice little identity. If I have some a plus b times a minus b, I know the answer is just going to be a squared minus b squared. So I could shortcut it. You know, I could say if I've got x plus 4 times x minus 4, I can just jump right to the answer. Take that x, that's my a, and square it. So it's going to be x squared minus, take my b and square it, 4 squared is 16, x squared minus 16. Okay? you got to kind of remember the formula to do it. If you forget the formula, just FOIL it out. doesn't take much time. x squared. Here I get minus 4x when I do the two outside pieces. Here I get plus 4x with the inside pieces. And then I get minus 16. And you see those two middle pieces drop away. Okay, I always tell my students, going in this direction, the, the, the multiplying, the FOIL direction, just FOIL it out and be done with it. But a little bit later, we got to go backwards. Okay, i got to start with this, x minus 16, and I have to produce these two pieces. Okay? That's the challenge. I have to produce those two pieces starting with that piece. Okay, and then I really need to remember a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. Okay, I have to remember that when I going forward, when I go backwards. Okay, going forward, we're just going to FOIL it out. Okay? All right, that's pretty good for this section. Uh, yeah, I think that covers everything I wanted to cover here. Okay, sounds good.